Hello, hello. Linda White here with another edition of Shakuri's Time Capsule, a short podcast where I reminisce over past fads, foods, and fashions from years gone by. Today, we are celebrating the school lunch. You know, the one thing I remember about my first day of school was the wonderful aroma of that day's lunch wafting through the building. It was my first day of first grade at Roosevelt Elementary School in Altus, Oklahoma in 1970. I was six years old and I'd never been away from my mother or my home before. Wearing my new plaid dress and carrying a huge satchel full of school supplies, I nervously stepped into that large brick building and as I headed towards my classroom, the comforting scent of fresh baked dinner rolls immediately calmed me down and made me look forward to that day's lunch. So when did schools start providing lunches? Well, let's go back in time to the 1800s when children brought their own lunches to school in pails or, if they lived nearby, went home for lunch. Some private organizations back then interested in child welfare provided lunches in some areas. But the very first official school lunch program began in Philadelphia in 1894, where children paid a penny for a midday meal. In the more rural areas, where there were one-room schoolhouses with a single stove heating the classroom, some teachers were encouraging students to bring in ingredients for communal soups that would be heated up in a kettle over the fire. It wasn't until 1946 that a national school lunch program would be instituted in the United States by President Harry Truman. Back in the 1940s, the school lunch program was reliant on agricultural surplus, meaning that a lot of the food rotted before it even got to some of the schools. School lunch menus back then included things like chipped beef, Spanish rice and bacon, cornmeal pudding, fruit shortcake, and a pork mush called scrapple. When the 50s came around, all those baby boomers that were born in the 40s were now in school, and the district's had to figure out new and productive ways to feed the increasing number of students. Many began serving cold lunches like sandwiches, cottage cheese, salads, tomato wedges, and ice cream. During the 60s, more ethnic-type dishes were finding their way onto school lunch menus, such as pizza, enchiladas, and chili con carne, as well as more traditional fare like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and fish sticks. When I started school in the 70s, fast food was becoming more popular, and schools started putting burgers, hot dogs, fries, and pizza on the menu. Now, let me say something about school pizza. To me, and apparently a lot of you out there, this was an all-time favorite school lunch entree. Okay, to the average adult, school pizza looks unimpressive. It was rectangular and had a soft bread-like crust with the cheese and crumbled sausage topping. But let me tell you something. To us kids, it was pure heaven. And I remember the lunch lines were always longer on pizza day. I also remember that on Fridays, we always had fish sandwiches. And I like these as well. As a military brat, I moved around a lot during my elementary school years, and I got to sample many different school lunches. I remember the ones in New York being the very best. We actually had ice cream truck type frozen treats with every lunch, like drumstick cones and push pops. By the time I entered junior high, it was the mid 1970s and fast food by this time was plentiful in the schools. My middle school actually had two lunches. There was the daily traditional hot lunch consisting of a meat entree, veggies and a dessert. And they also had what they called the Hurricane Special, because the Hurricanes was that school's mascot. And the Hurricane Special usually included a hamburger or hot dog, french fries, and a milkshake. Now, guess which meal most kids went for? Yep, that's right. No wonder we're an obese generation today. By the time I graduated from high school in 1982, school lunches in Florida had approached the $1 mark. The year before, the National Lunch Program made headlines when they had the audacity to declare ketchup a vegetable as a response to budget cuts to the program made by the administration at the time. 
It wouldn't be until 2010 when healthy school lunches became more of a priority with the government, as well as society at large, with celebrity chefs like Jamie Oliver championing the cause. Now my husband, who's from England, has slightly different memories of school lunches, or school dinners as they were called over there. Apparently in the primary schools, they'd have dishes like meat pies, veggies, mashed potato, some kind of sponge pudding and custard. But once he was in the upper grades, my husband recalls just hitting up the local fish and chip takeaway for lunch. So what are your school lunch memories? Drop me a line at shakuri2, that's C-H-A-K-K-U-R-I and the number two at gmail.com, or check in at this podcast's Instagram feed at Shakuri's Time Capsule, all one word. Looking for something to read? Check out my two books that are currently available on Amazon, Yellow Gal, Queen of the Montclair, and The Bell of Camden County, both written by me, Linda M. White, are set in the Old South during the late 19th and early 20th century. They both deal with the subject of racial identity and are available in both paperback and digital format. Once again, I thank you very much for listening. Take care and stay safe. Until next time, adios.